So I was actually going to talk about this subject a little while back. Like two weeks ago, someone had contacted me and asked me to look into what was going on with this person. And like I said before, in my previous videos, I was kind of in this weird headspace. I had a couple of different not so great things happen in my personal life and I spent about five days sitting in my favorite oversized all that t-shirt. And so I opted to just put this topic on a list of things that I would look into and I would write about when I was in the right mindset to do so. And personally, I am very very, very glad I opted to wait to make this video because in the space of a couple weeks, in the space of me deciding to put this on the back burner and just watch it as it unfolds, this man that we are about to talk about has admitted to what he has done, said that everyone out here was just trying to cancel him for quote, things that weren't that bad. He has broken up with his wife because she found out about everything that happened online, moved into his car, gone to the police to supposedly file a police report on himself except, um, no, that didn't happen and we're going to talk about why. Again, said he showed up to the cops and showed them everything and they said, lol, no, sir, you didn't break any laws, you're good, man. Made videos saying that he was going to leave TikTok because he had relapsed and needed to seek treatment for what he had done only for him to come back less than two weeks later, pretend that nothing happened, and then say everything that happened was a lie. This man did all of that in the same amount of time where I opted not to get out of my oversized all that t-shirt. If I had made this video before, I would have ended the video saying that he has left the internet forever to deal with what he has done and talked about how ridiculous his reactions have been to saying that no, nothing's illegal. Now I can give you the entire complete story. Whereas previously I would have made a video saying that he has left the internet forever to deal with what he has done, that he is gone and we should hope he stays gone. Now I can talk about how he's come back to the internet and give you the full complete story. So uh, what I guess I'm trying to say is that without my depression swooping in to sucker punch me in the face, this video wouldn't be as good as it is. It wouldn't be as complete as it is. So for once in my life, thank you depression. I don't know what I would do without you. Namely because I've been dealing with you since I was the ripe old age of six and I've grown used to your wily ways. However, with that being said, I do want to start this video by straight out apologizing to you guys because I realized at a certain point in my life on this channel, I actually gave this creepazoid who we're about to talk about a shout out. I supported this channel. I talked about them. This is the first time that someone I have talked about positively on my channel has gone on to do something like this and frankly, I am full on disgusted by it. About a year or so ago when everything was going on with the rewired soul drama and everyone and their mother's butts was calling Chris out, I actually talked to this man Eric and I supported him. I gave him a shout out. At the time he was going by the name Driven Industries on YouTube and he was not nearly, nearly as big as he is now. And I genuinely thought what he was doing was what the Rewired Soul wanted to do but better. He made content around dealing with mental health issues and was a mental health advocate and I saw what he was doing as good. I told him straight up he was doing a good job and I told you guys, my own subscribers, which I believe were only 20,000 at the time, to go and check out his channel because he talked about mental health and mental health advocacy in a productive and healthy way. I supported this guy and if any of you guys actually went and supported him and you ended up in his crosshairs, I owe you an apology. I truly do because I didn't think that he would go on to behave this way. I had no reason to believe that he would go on to do everything he has done, everything he has admitted to doing. Namely because despite all the things I talk about, I don't go around assuming the worst in people. I don't assume everyone's going to turn out this way, which is weird because so much of my life and so much of the internet is super negative and terrible and I talk about the negative and terrible so you would just assume that I would auto assume that at this point. I mean let's be real. Eric, Eric B. Zinc puts out content like this. And like this. And like this. talked about the importance of mental health and taking care of oneself. He puts out content that is supposed to make the vulnerable feel seen and gives tips to people who might not otherwise know how to take care of their mental well-being. So the fact that the guy who puts out this also uses his mental health tip line as a way to talk sexually to his vulnerable fan base and has tried at least on one occasion to have a sexual conversation with a 16 year old girl at 4 in the morning, yeah, that's not okay. And the fact that he has responded to everyone finding out about this by trying to gaslight his audience and tell them, hey guys, 
It's not that bad. I just talked to a minor and I went to the cops and they said, LOL, it's fine. You're good. Stop criticizing me about it, please. He's a lot. He's disgusting. And today, we're talking about it. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? For those of you who are unaware, Eric B. Zink is a TikToker with over a million followers who is known for making content surrounding mental health advocacy. Most of his content is very surface level and just supports the very basic idea of mental health awareness. His content centers around making the watcher understand that they are not alone, that mental health is important and that people should feel validated in their feelings. He has been on TikTok only for a short while. However, he's been on his other social media platforms for quite some time, although he used to go by the name Driven Industry when he initially started out. However, it wasn't until he was on TikTok that he really rose to prominence, which can be seen in the differential between his followers on YouTube and his followers on TikTok itself. On a side note, I did once have a conversation with a TikTok person with over 5 million followers who told me that they felt like TikTok was social media on easy mode and that they hated all forms of social media otherwise because because it was quote too hard. That had nothing to do with what we're talking about. I don't know why I said it. I'm sorry. Eric's platform was quickly growing and he started to maneuver with it. He rebranded his channel on YouTube, changed the format, and established creators were starting to repost him and talk positively about him. One notable example of this was Boogie2988 posting a TikTok of him saying that Eric was doing amazing work and he was stoked to see him grow. Social media success can feel like a whirlwind and you can easily get caught up in it. With my own tiny platform, I I still have moments where I get overwhelmed by the numbers and I let it go to my head at times. I'm very lucky though because when I log off or I put my phone down, I'm still just Shannon, living in a very dangerous part of Las Vegas in an apartment that is next to an alley where people have sex loudly and I basically am not thriving. So the numbers can't really affect me because this is my reality. When you live a simpler life compared to your social media success, it's easy to stay humble and unfortunately, Eric doesn't seem to have that, or at least didn't seem to have that. He didn't have that safety net to keep him grounded and instead allowed himself to be swept up by the praise of his fans and bought into his own hype, which led him down the path of making a mental health tip line where his fans could message and talk directly with him. Again, in theory, this is a great idea. In theory, I love the idea of giving people a number to text and call when they are down, when they are feeling lonely, and seeing as this is a thing that already exists and is run by professionals, I don't fully understand why Eric felt the need to do this. But again, this would be fine in theory. However, Eric quickly began misusing the line. For some reason, I don't know how he got this idea, but Eric seems to think that his penis is a regular part of a mental health regimen. And spoiler alert, it's not. If you're talking to a mental health provider, mental health advocate, or mental health anything, and they bring up their penis, run for the hills. That has nothing to do with anything. They are lying and abusing you. After setting this up, at one point Eric started talking to a 16 year old girl who was allegedly suicidal. Seeing her post that she was going through a distressing time on Facebook or on Instagram, Instagram, we don't know, and wanting to let her know that he was there for her, what do you think Eric did? What do you think he did when he saw this post? Do you think A, he tried to let her know she was not alone in the way she was feeling and gave her tips and tricks that he has used before by mental health professionals? B, do you think he tried to get her to open up with some off-topic banter, spanning things they both like and relate to? C, do you think he tried too hard to relate to her by using hip and inappropriate terms because he's 40 years old and she's 16? Or D, do you think he tried so hard hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. I'll give you a second to guess what he said and what he did. Time's up. He did absolutely none of those things and instead kept asking her inappropriate questions about if she stunk, if her butt smelled, and trying to make the conversation that again was happening with a 16 year old, a minor, who was apparently suicidal at four in the morning sexual. He saw this girl struggling and his game plan on how to help her was to make things weird and sexual as a 40 year old non-licensed mental health advocate. So let's actually read the straight up conversation so you can get a sense of what is happening because I feel like me just saying it doesn't do enough justice. He started out the conversation by sending her a video and said hey. She responded with a hey back. He said hey what's up how are you? She replied good lol how about you? He responds saying lies lol allegedly after seeing her post so Okay, which again, very normal conversation. It's very lighthearted at this point. Not really a conversation you would expect to be having when talking to someone about their mental health and well-being, seeing as the girl seems not to want to discuss anything with him. But you know, at least it's normal. Comes across very normal. No subtext, no anything here. She responds by saying, no. And he says, yes, sass. She said, don't like talking. And he responds with, fine, ass. Now this, to me, just to me, a human person,
person who often talks to their friends about their own mental health and well-being and tries to be there for people often. Uh, this is weird. Like, when talking to people when they are struggling and they have emo posted or said something that makes me feel worried about their mental health, I usually say something along the lines of, I know you were going through something and going through a hard time, but just know I am here for you. So if you ever want to talk, I'm right here. You don't have to talk to me, but I'm here. I also let them know that not wanting to open up to me is also okay. And if they don't feel it's appropriate, that it's fine. And that if they ever just need someone to laugh with, vent with, or just play among us with to get their minds off of things, I'm right here and I'm down for anything. Sometimes it just helps to know that someone is there for you, even if you don't want to talk to them and that someone cares. Never have I once used the approach of calling someone who I think is suicidal an ass. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just like not like other girls. <laughs> I'm just so quirky. The conversation on the screenshot continues with them talking mostly normally, but I want to draw your attention to the portion where he asks, how old are you? To which she says 16. So at this point, he is fully aware of her age, that she is a minor, and he's now texting with a minor at 4 a.m., which isn't weird because apparently he is only trying to help her because she's struggling with her mental health, and that's completely normal. That's the basis of the conversation, that's the context of the conversation, so that 3 a.m. currently, at this point in the conversation, doesn't feel weird. After confirming, after Eric confirms, reads it out, responds to it, that he is talking to someone 24 years his junior, he asks her, how many kids do you have? To which she jokes and says eight and he says sweet and she responds her mom would kill her and that if she had eight kids she would be dead he responds with you wouldn't be walking right if that was the case and she says she can't even look after herself lol never mind a kid he then begins a weird line of questioning and asks if she showered. Now, full context of the conversation, she just said she can't take care of herself. It makes sense. I get it. Is it weird that this 40-year-old is texting a 16-year-old at 4 a.m. if she showered? Yes. But in full context of everything we know, does that make sense? Is that mostly appropriate? Sure. It's still weird, but sure. He asks if she showered. She says she hasn't because it's so much effort. And he asks if she stinks. And she replies, LOL, I'm having fun laying in bed. It's 4 a.m. And he continues this line of questioning, asking her when's the last time she showered. And she says, I don't remember. And then he asks her, because he keeps pressing this, if her pits smell, and goes on to ask, does it smell worse when you fart? Which, no. No, sir. No, sorry, Bob. I'm sorry. But before him asking, hey, have you showered? After she commented about not being able to take care of herself. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. But to continue this line of questioning so thoroughly, to the point where you're asking her if her pit smell, does she stink? And asking her about farts and continuing this, even though it's like this conversation, like, why is this where you're basing it in? Why is this what you're stuck on? No mental health professional would do that because it's entirely inappropriate. It just feels weird. You know who would do that though? Someone who has a smell fetish. Someone who has a fart fetish. Someone who's weird. Someone who's up at 4 a.m talking to a 16 year old in a fucking creepy way that's who would do this I don't know why you would say any of this really I talk to people at all hours of day and night people who are struggling on random days and they don't do this shit I don't do this shit when I'm struggling people who talk to me don't do this shit no one who is looking out for someone else's mental health talks like this it just does not happen this way but does it end there does it no you saw the time bar on this video. She responds with a classic for fuck's sake, which should have informed him that he was being creepy and weird. However, he is a 40 year old who is in a conversation with a minor, so he doesn't understand that that's code for this is fucking weird, please stop. And simply went on to say, what does FFS mean? And continues to say, well, there's no fucking if you smell bad, then no babies. Let me say that again. This 40 year old texting a 16 year old at 4 a.m., for some reason, decides to say, in a conversation that's allegedly supposed to be about her mental well-being, he says, there's no fucking, if you smell bad, then no babies. Sir, you are talking to a minor. You are interested, allegedly, because I don't think you are, but you are interested in helping their mental well-being and you shouldn't send them a message via cellular device ever talking about potentially fucking them or them having sex or them being fucked. Saying, well, there's no fucking if you smell bad, has nothing to do with someone's mental health and well-being. It's not funny. It's not anything. It's just 
fucking weird. She replies with a classic oh well, seeing as a 40 year old TikTok star just said he wouldn't fuck her if she smelled bad after asking if she smelled worse when she farted and really driving home that he wants her to smell. And he hits her with a what's going on? To which she replies that's a shame. But does it stop there? No, because he continues by asking her does your butt smell? To which she says she doesn't really smell it to be honest. He then responds by saying, just curious, don't fart or they will smell worse. Which, again, I don't know what this has to do with mental health. It's 4 a.m., Eric. What are you doing? Either this man is the stupidest man on the planet and talks to everyone like this, which would be weird, which is genuinely freaking weird. Or he has a very specific fetish pertaining to smells and he won't let this go. He just keeps bringing up the fact that she might possibly smell and that she might possibly at some point fart and that her pits might stink. This is supposed to be, once again, a conversation happening because she is suicidal. This is supposed to be a conversation pertaining to her mental health. Again, he has no reason to believe in his own words. Again, in his own words, in every defense he's ever said, he has every reason to believe that she is suicidal. But here he is asking her if she stinks, if she smells bad, if she's farting. And he keeps pushing that and she keeps giving him one word, I don't really want to talk answers. And towards the end, he actually starts to open up more about where he is at mentally despite the conversation starting about her. There is a little bit more to this conversation, but it actually veers off. I'm going to link links to the full thing in the description down below. And it's mostly her not wanting to talk anymore. And you can definitely get that vibe in her messages that she doesn't want to talk. When these text message conversations came out, when people started making TikToks about them, what do you think happened? What do you think this mental health advocate who uses all his time, his effort, his day-to-day -to, -day to talk to people about what they can do to help themselves, what do you think he did when these text messages came out? Do you think A, he morally grandstanded about how he was a great person and absolutely positively would never cross any lines with anyone, much less a minor, much less his vulnerable fan base? B, do you think he went and got a filing number, not an actual police report, and tried to say that he went to the police and showed them what happened, showed them what everyone was mad at to make sure it wasn't illegal, and absolutely all the cops said, no man, it's not, because it was just weird and morally messed up. Or C, do you think he kept posting like nothing happened, even though he had been thoroughly called out? Or you know, let's add a fourth option. Do you think he pretended to go seek treatment and played the pity me card? If you answered that he somehow, some way, was able to do all of those then you would be right because this man is such a moron he could not simply do one dumb thing he had to do all of them he first tried to go back posting like nothing was wrong and tried to continue on as if nothing was happening here just no nothing was going on everyone could ignore it it wasn't that big of a deal he then after that went to the police station one morning and had them write a filing number on a card to present to his iphone phone camera and show tiktok that he was holding himself accountable he wanted to show people look it's not illegal, even though it's morally and ethically wrong. It's not illegal, so y'all can calm down. I'm a nice guy. You guys are just haters. Behind me is the La Palma, California Police Department. I spent part of the morning there. Right here is the card and the report number of everything I went through and showed them. They just they made a report. They said there's nothing that to do, but I'm they gotta keep myself accountable. So for anyone that's questioned about everything, except for the police, that's the police department. Here's the report number for the La Palma Police Department. Because I will keep myself accountable for anything and everything I ever do. That, that's questioned. Now, what's weird about this video is a lot of things. And fun fact, I have been assaulted, I have been punched in the face, and I have just been plain old fucked with a couple times in my life. A good many times, I would say. And each time, someone ends up calling the police, and I actually get a police report made, and I get a little card, even if I don't want to press charges, and even if I don't want anything to happen. The card that I have gotten each time that happens looks nothing like the one Eric got. Truly, it does not. And there is a good reason why that is. And that reason is because he actually didn't get a police report, and instead showed a police filing number because he's a liar and is lying like he would do because again he's a liar and then directly after that this fucking legend with a fart fetish who messaged a 16 year old at 4 a.m started going back to posting his regular smegular content as if to say hey me doing all that me texting a 16 year old at 4 a.m and really pushing that she had a fucking fart butt i don't know that wasn't a big deal don't worry about it please ignore that please ignore everything that's coming out about me fucking my vulnerable 
quote-unquote mentally ill fans who look up to me because I'm a mental health advocate. I have sufficiently addressed everything and no one should care about that anymore. He really tried to say that even though no, Eric, you didn't. You didn't address how weird it is that you said everything you said. You didn't address why it wasn't okay that you were texting a minor at 4 a.m. in the first place and how that was morally and ethically wrong of you to do. You didn't apologize for that. You didn't directly answer any questions about that. When someone is apologizing or being critiqued like this, they need to at least understand what they did wrong. Like, come on, Eric, do better. But he continually tried to let it go. And after a myriad of comments, constantly and correctly asking him to respond in a way that wasn't total ass to actually be accountable, Eric decided he was going to do that. He was finally going to hold himself accountable. And by hold himself accountable, I mean the man was going to go up and leave his TikTok, say his life was ruined, and that the ramification of his actions that he was not responsible for, that he was not responsible for somehow, had led to the demise of his marriage, and that he was now homeless, and that he would be going offline to seek medical treatment for his mental health, and he probably wouldn't be back, and that this was so hard for him, and that everyone, yes everyone, should feel bad for him. Like I said earlier, at the time I was first looking into this situation when my mental health was not that great, when I was taking some days off, I was like, okay, this is a happy ending. He's gonna go offline, he's gonna seek treatment, and he will be advised by his doctors to not come back online because it's pretty damn clear to see he should not be in a position of power. Because that position of power that put him in line with vulnerable men and women, it really fucked him up. And if what he has told the internet is actually true, if what he has said holds any water, which it doesn't, he should stay away from the internet. No mental health professional, if he's seeking treatment, would say go back to that. I was going to say that Eric should take care of his mental health and make the choice to stay gone, to get a normal job, to stay away because this is clearly bad for him. And honestly, like I said earlier, I'm so glad my depression kept me from making that video because in less than two weeks, in less than two weeks, after he said he was going to seek treatment in an outpatient facility and he would probably never return, he came back with this video. Hey, badass motherfucker. The one that's being judged and held the standards that you don't even know. For the one out there whose family says that you're playing the victim, your friends say you're playing the victim and you're just trying to share. The one that's been through some real shit and you know what, people just toss it under the rug and pretend it never happened. This is for you. To remind you that you are amazing, that you're wonderful, that you're beautiful, that you're smart, that you know what, fuck everything else and do you because at the end of the day, the person staring at you in the mirror is the only person that matters. Friends will turn your back on you. You know what, family will leave you. And that's part of life. But when you look in the mirror and you realize that you've done everything with what you've been given to make it through to today, then you lay your head down and you know you did the best in your heart and in your head to fight through. You're amazing and you deserve judgment from no one. When it's all said and done, you have to look in the mirror and be happy. You can be by just doing you. You're amazing. Don't let anyone tell you differently. I have so many questions. But first I want to say, sir, what the flippity fuck do you mean? Fuck everyone else and just do you. Fuck everyone else. Sir, you literally were called out for talking inappropriately with a minor, not to mention trying to have sex with many of your vulnerable fans where you were in a position of power and you were profiting off them because you were putting them on OnlyFans. You were called out for accurate, articulate, well said reasons. And you even admitted at a certain point that you shouldn't have done what you did. What are you talking about? You are... (laughs) What? This is like when I told my mom that I was sorry for slapping my sister across her face when she stole my shit when I was five, but I wasn't actually sorry. This is like my motivational anthem for when I apologize, but I don't mean it. Like, you're not actually sorry. This is ridiculous. Oh, but don't worry. He also went on to release this fucking banger. I'm gonna do something called fun with screenshots. Uh, I didn't want to do this actually against another creator because it would be really, really uncool of me to do and make an even bad, bad person. Fun with screenshots is this essentially, just to let you know how screenshots work. One, they are admissible as evidence until they are authenticated, though, usually thrown out. Because essentially what I can do, I have two phones. I can save somebody in my phone with their name, I can put a profile picture that I find of them online, and I can have a conversation with myself. And I can say whatever I want to say. I can pretend that I was a therapist that was famous on any social media app, and literally say things like depression isn't real, all of this other stuff. Screenshot that, and I can share it and essentially start a cancel culture. That is why on cancel culture, you never see voice memos. If you ever want to communicate with somebody and not worry about screenshots and what's shared and how it's shared, voice memos is the way to go. It will prevent so much brain damage for you. I had to learn that the hard way. Maybe this helps you. Maybe not which is him legitimately trying to gaslight his fucking audience into thinking the screenshots that he had previously said were correct, that he admitted to being accurate, that he showed the cops. This is him saying, oh, those are fake. This man is such a joke, is such a moron. He should not be in this position at all. I am going to go ahead and end this video here, but to be honest, I'm an hour into recording and I barely covered this. I barely touched it. He was also sexting and explicitly messaging other people, his fans, again, vulnerable people who come to him for mental health advice, which you shouldn't do. And he even started in OnlyFans where he would literally travel to have sex with his fans. 
it's a lot. It's not okay. And when you are working with the vulnerable in this situation, that should not be what you do. That should never be what you do. This man is so many things. He's a joke. He's a liar. And in my opinion, with his own actions, he's a predator in my book. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this is being blown out of proportion? Or are you like me and think that when you're a 40 year old man talking to an allegedly suicidal 16 year old at four in the morning, you shouldn't be talking about fucking them or their farts or really pushing that fart thing because you're weird. Weird. Maybe I'm the weird one here though. Maybe I'm just quirky and I'm the only one who sees that as gross. Let me know about that in the comments down below. And reminder, if you want to enter my iPad giveaway, that is still going on. With that, I am out of here. Later guys.